Then I guess I'll start the presentation again. Hello. So again, I just wanted to introduce myself. My name is Mathino. I'm, I'm one of the program managers at Bottle. I help support the school, support um, a lot of the staffing, logistical stuff. Did you want to reintroduce yourself again, Truman? Sure. Hi, I'm Truman, um, a law student in the area, and I do not have experience with uh, debate, but I'm really excited to learn more about Bottle tonight and tomorrow. All right, great. Um, Sterling, you want to go next? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I'm a high school senior. I do have some um, debate experience working in the parliamentary high school debate circuit and also teaching some middle schoolers at a Horner Middle School in Fremont. And Sterling, you said parliamentary? Oh, yeah, yeah. that's right. Parliamentary. Right. I did parley. I was a parley national winner as well. So, yeah. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So I, I know that tomorrow we're going to be moving on to policy debate. Yes, yes, um, which is a, a little different, but um, debate, you know, I've done Congress and I think I've done extent, all, all of it is, I haven't done LD or PUF, so um, right. but all of those things kind of work, kind of just different format, but it's all arguing, you know. Exactly, so the foundations are always the same. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Right. yeah. Well, I guess I can, I can go last here. Uh, hi, my name is Shway, I'm, uh, I have no, absolutely no debate experience. So I'm, uh, I'm the noob in the room here. Okay. All right. Well, cool. Well, cool. Um, well, I, I'm glad that you are all here. Um, and so, yeah, I'll just, let's just get into it. So you'll um, learn about, you know, who we all are, who you'll see tomorrow in terms of staff, who can help support you during your day. Um, and then you'll learn about some basics about debate, um, how to choose a winner, which is kind of your role for tomorrow, um, how to give out points, um, how to um, write out your ballot. Your ballots will be online, so you can submit them via any smart device that you have. Um, if you need to like submit your ballot at the tab table or in the tab room, if you don't have access to technology, you can still submit your ballot. You just have to reach someone with technology who does. And then just, you know, how to interact with students during that round is kind of what this um, presentation will be about. So, I this away. All right. So this is who we have as staff. So we have Maya Whitaker as the um, executive director. She operates everything from the top down. She is the main person in charge. And then you have Sakara Bardell, who just moved up to uh, program director. She helps make sure that um, all the programming is taken care of and directing where the programming leads into. And then you have myself, who is um, one of the staff members for, well, now the remaining staff member, because Sakara moved up. Um, I work with the high school, um, um, students, Sakai still works with high school, we still both work with the high school students, um, and um, she helps with the novice division, I help with the openly division for the most part, the open division is kind of like the varsity division and our novice division is kind of those students who are just, you know, emerging into debate, and then outside of the high school um, program that we have, we also have a middle school program, and so Willene operates that side of our program. And that's who we are as a staff. So um, policy debate. Policy debate is literally about federal policies um, and some other policies. Um, the, there's exceptions to debate. There's exceptions to the rules. But for the most part, you will see people talk about federal policies. There might be um, other sides that may be talking about counter options. Um, so in debate, you might have these choices of policies to vote for. And so that's kind of what debate is about. It'll be two on two debate. So one side will represent the affirmative, which is what we commonly know as the pro side. But in policy debate, we call it the affirmative side. We call it the affirmative side because there's a topic that's chosen this year and they have to affirm some interpretation of that topic. And so that's what the affirmative does. And then you have the con side, which is the negative, and they provide, you know, just the arguments that prove why doing that policy option would not be a good idea. And so um, the topic is year round, unlike in Parley or any other forum, um, we choose a topic and we have that topic year round. So these students 
should be well versed or have some um foundational information about you know what some scope of the topic is um and so that's what policy debate is it's two on two and then one judge one evaluator you're the one to evaluate and so how do you evaluate the round or how does the, the debate works well um you know we have these speeches and there's basically eight speeches in a debate round with four cross-examination sessions. So there's eight full speeches where one person gives a speech. So there's eight individual speeches, but then there's four moments in the debate as well, where you are allowed to ask and answer questions. And we call that cross-examination. Some students may call it crossfire as well, but cross-examination, crossfire, same thing. Um, so yes, cross-examination is three minutes. Um, and then when you have a constructive, that's eight minutes. Constructives is where students are allowed to construct arguments. So that's where they're able to build arguments or even present new arguments. So anytime, anytime that they're in those constructors, they are allowed to bring up new arguments. And you can follow this little column here We'll provide like cheat sheets for the judge in order to guide them through the day round so you don't have to retain all this information. Like, oh, I got to remember all this. No, you have sheets there at the tournament that'll help you, um, that'll help guide you through the day and through the round. So let's just take a look at this really quickly. And we also have rebuttals. This is where you close the arguments. Then we'll look at the guide. This is where you close the arguments. Rebuttals is like where you, you know, you're you're wrapping it up. You, you're closing the doors, you're sealing the deal, you're, you're, you're closing the arguments, you're, you're telling the judge why you should win that debate round. You know, what, what are the reasons why, you know, your argument still stands? Um, and so those are rebuttals. And so those are times that students are not allowed to bring up any new arguments. So any new arguments during that five minute speech time is not to be evaluated. The other thing here is, yeah, yep. I, oh, I already, I, okay, good. So in terms of prep time, they can use prep time at their discretion. Um, They've been taught to strategic, my students, particularly in the varsity level, should have gone through enough of these debate rounds to know when to use prep time strategically. Um, And we can talk a little bit more about that later. But um, let's just go into looking at how a speech round for uh, a policy debate round looks like. So you have the affirmative who starts the debate. So they say, oh, we have this problem. There's some things going on. This is how we fix it with some type of plan or advocacy statement or whatever. Then the negatives to ask questions about that. And just make sure you pay attention to who's the first affirmative and who's the second, second or whatever. Some of our students, you may not be put in a varsity round, you may be put in a novice round, and those students are new, so they might not know who goes next themselves. So just make sure you are looking at your ballot and see who had, and then you can ask them which side do you want to take. You can be like, do you want to take the most students at at before they come to the tournament have had some practice and know which side they want to be on, and um, or in terms of. Um, if they want to be the first or the second. Not, they can't choose whether they want to be after negative. Our random computer generalizer puts that together, who's going to compete against who and who's going to be on what side. But in terms of who's going to be the first or second speaker from that team, they get to choose that. So just make sure you're paying attention to that. Um, but yeah, so because the first speaker from the negative team is going to be you know, speaking next, it's probably best that the second negative asks the question so that they can prep during that cross-examination period. So they should be thinking strategically and tag teaming, tag teaming is allowed, but for whatever reason, if you prefer, like if you watch one debate or if you have any debate experience, um, Sterling, you said you have debate experience and you've seen these crossfire um, and they get a little too much and out of control and people are talking over each other. And if you feel like within your paradigm, like, no, I just prefer people not to tag team. That's okay if that's your preference, if that's your paradigm, and you can say that at the top of the debate round. Um, 
And you can also say it in the middle of the debate round too, honestly, if there's some issue and you feel like things are getting out of hand, you can always, yeah, you can always um, definitely, you know, oppose that debate norm. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So I actually have a question about that, if you don't mind. Go ahead. So um, I am a new judge, right? Even though I do have some deb debate experience, I've never done a policy. So I take it that I'm probably going to be judging a lot of novice students. If, you know, these novice students, they inadvertently break some of the rules, let's say like some of the rebuttal speakers, they bring up new arguments in their, in their speeches. Well, there's no real rules. Um, so what you would do in the event of that is just the same way if you make whatever, if you're not, you know, clear, concise in a parley speech, you just dock their speaker points, right? There's no rules to debate except like, even if they do break the rules, like let's say they are trying to speak over their eight minutes, they shouldn't be speaking over their eight minutes because the judge should be like, all right, that's time. So th there's no real rules to debate. You just dock their speaker points and provide feedback as to what they can do better. And, and that would be what's on the ballot. As you, you know how you get ranks for mm -hmm. parley, it's the same thing in, in policy debate. There's ranks and there's speaker points that relate to your rank. And then there's also a place for you to make comments. Got it, got it, yeah. But so let's say in the middle of the speech, they do start, you know, accidentally breaking some rules. Am I allowed, you know, as a judge, to actually say, you know, say like no, no, no. you can you can't say anything until you've gone through all of this, right? So once you get through all of these speeches, you'll wait to the end. Well, mm. first you have to submit the ethical thing is you'll because sometimes you're kind of like, I don't know who to choose from. You're still like some debates are murky. And so you're kind of like, I don't know what to choose from. So the ethical thing to do is go through all of this, review your notes, review what you recorded from the debate. Think about your arguments, take some time, you know, from five to no more than 10 minutes. And after, you know, um, and then once you think about it and you wrote out your 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 feedback on that electronic ballot and um, you'll submit it. Once you submit it, then you read your notes from your ballot to the students saying, this is why I chose to vote the way I, I vote. Well, actually, you can't even tell them um, who you voted for, but you can provide feedback. So you can't tell the students who you voted for. You can just provide them feedback as to what they can do better. Got it, got it. All right, so no talking at all to the debaters. You, you can't know, talk to them, no. No, okay. no. It, you can, if if you can encourage them, right? Like you can encourage them if they're like, oh, I don't know what to say. And they have like two minutes left. You can be like, keep going. You're doing all right. You know, you can do things like that. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, sounds good. Yeah, no problem. And so, yeah, so just make sure you're paying attention to who's supposed to be speaking at what time. If they say they're the one AC, they have two times in which they speak. They have one constructive here and one rebuttal here. So they get one eight minute speech and one five minute speech. So, so there's four people, which means there's four speeches for the constructive and sports, four speeches for the rebuttal. So each person gets an opportunity to speak and construct and each person gets an opportunity to close the arguments. Now, take notice that the affirmative starts the debate and the affirmative team who's on the pro ends the debate round right here in the 2AR. So that's kind of unfair. So what you're going to notice is what, what happens in debate in terms of how debates are conducted. In terms of theory of debate, um, we have what's called um, the negative block. So the negative team gets an opportunity to speak back to back. They speak during the constructive with the eight minute constructive. And then there's the last cross-examination because that's the last constructive from all of the teams. And so after that constructive, there's the last um, cross-examination or crossfire where those questions and answers are made. And then after that, the negative team gets to speak again with a rebuttal. So just make sure you know that the only time that there's back-to-back -back speeches from a team is during the negative in, uh, from the, in the middle of the debate. So they get the middle of the debate, and then the affirmative gets the, um, out of the, 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 the polar of the debate, polar parts of the debate. Yep. We have public forum as well. So that's with our middle, middle schoolers. It's also two-on-two -two debate. They call pro, pro, and con, con. Two people on each side, one judge, same thing. Um, so they, they call cross-examination, crossfire, same thing. They get constructives. But their 
speeches kind of look a little differently in terms of how they close out the debate. So they have what's called a summary and a final focus. Final focus. So notice here the constructors are only four minutes. There's a crossfire for three minutes. There's um, time to rebuttal. There's time to give a summary. And there's a final focus. And this is how the middle schoolers debate. So these rounds are a lot shorter. Um, so, yeah. And everything in terms of how you act in a policy debate round is the same you would for a public forum round. You wait till you get done with all of this. You don't, especially for our middle schoolers, oh my gosh, do not tell the middle schoolers who won because that's going to cause fights. It's, it's, do not do that. <laughs> it's already bad if you do it for the middle schoolers. You know, middle schoolers are a little bit more, I mean, high schoolers are a little bit more mature, but our middle schoolers cannot handle it whatsoever. So do not tell, because it's, it's just going to be crying and kids are going to feel discouraged. So just refrain from doing that, please. I just implore that you all do that. And then, um, so yeah, that's the order and you'll get a sheet on this as well. So the, there, here's a topic. So for novices, so I'm gonna just, let me just do it like this. So for the policy, um, there is the open division and there's the, this is the topic for everyone this year. Whether you're open, novice, JV, this is the topic. The United States federal government should substantially increase security cooperation with the North Atlantic Treaty Organization on artificial intelligence used for this is not the this is not it okay i know if, i know it by heart all right it's the united states federal government should substantially increase its security cooperation um yes yeah, should substantially increase its, its security cooperation with nato in one of the following areas artificial intelligence bio technology and cybersecurity that's the that's the actual resolution so they must use um, security cooperation. The word is sh should substantially increase. Um, and um, so, yeah, you'll get the real words tomorrow. So don't, don't fret on that. You'll get the real words. And I'll explain why that's important a little later. But that's, that's the topic in terms of what everybody has to do in the nation when it relates to high school policy debate. That's what everybody has to talk about. But you have to affirm some form of interpretation of that topic so the novices just take one minor scope of what the topic is talking about so the emerging new debaters they're just starting off with just getting their feet with wet with understanding how a scope of a topic can look like and so they're just doing the United States federal government you know what i have an actual copy of it somewhere in this house i believe i got debate evidence everywhere this it's under this chair too <laughs> life as a freaking debater it's weird okay here's the debate file <laughs> things that i do okay um so okay you know, yeah, yeah, this is the correct one all right so the novices their plan is, therefore, we offer the following plan. The United States federal government should substantially increase its security cooperation with NATO through cybersecurity intelligence, sharing, training, and capacity building for cyber operations. So that's the, that they're just doing, they're not in talking about artificial intelligence. They're not talking about biotechnology. And even as it relates to cybersecurity, they're just talking about intelligence sharing, training of personnel, and capacity building for cyber operations. That's it. So they're just one interpretation. Now, when you get to the open division, the interpretation explodes like Pandora's box. So you might find some students like security cooperation, security cooperation means withdrawal from NATO, period. Security cooperation looks like withdrawing from the United States because they're imperialist. So the 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 scope of how you can interpret the that conversation can widen. <laughs> Um, the, the public forum topic may have changed, but I believe as of right now, it hasn't changed. It is the United States federal government should, should establish a comprehensive bilateral trade agreement with Taiwan. So public forum is again, the forum that our middle schoolers use. So they'll be talking about, um, the bilateral trade agree agreement with the United States and Taiwan. They may also, the negative side might talk about how that may impact 
um, Taiwan's relationship with other countries and those things. Yes, Truman. So who are we judging tomorrow? Is it middle school students or high school students? Um, you may be judging both. So you might have to just um, just just understand that they'll be giving you if it does, they should be educating you. You should feel educated about this year's topic. And if you don't, maybe you need to be like, hey, you need to do some research because I don't know what you're talking about. Or maybe you need to organize your arguments better or what have you, whatever feedback that you feel, you know, it, again, th the reason why I loved late judges because they just kept it real. Some of our students um, too, especially if they're in the open division, there's different aesthetics too, to debate, like different aesthetics in terms of just even how you present and how you perform, right? So for me, when I was a debater and what I'm trying to get our students and how I'm training some of our open students is, um, so I like to use poetry a lot. I'd use a lot of spoken word and I had a kind of like a rap style. Everybody sound like you rapping, but I was like, no, I'm not rapping. I'm just, that's just my, my cadence or whatever. And so that was just for me. So when I would have text, I would have this ivory tower text wrapped around um, even not even just I retired text or maybe, you know, even organic intellectuals and it wrap it around like even my own um, um, poetry. Right. And so some of the students, you know, have started to take on that aesthetic as well. Some students have storytelling as they're, you know, using their arguments. Some people are using personal narratives. So um, the aesthetic to debate can also change as well. So you should just feel educated no matter how they perform or how they conduct themselves in, the, in that debate or no matter what the content is, you know, of the debate, because we hope that we're showing them the skills to do so. So, and, and again, if they're just learning, you know, again, a lot of these schools are coming from underserved, you know, educational communities. So just give them some of the things that, you know, could just help them just be better, you know, students, period. Um, most of the things I teach them are just about like study tips and like, you know, things that you need to like prepare for, like just being in a standardized testing environment or a college environment. And so that's how I try to train the students. And so, you know, if there's like testing aids or like study tips that you can use, you know, pass that on. So your role as a judge, you're just there to be the timekeeper to make sure that the order is well. Also make sure that they ain't trash in these classrooms. <laughs> you're also there to make sure that they are acting like leaders and they're not cussing each other out um, and that they're acting like young adults. You know, I, I really, you know, my coach, you know, we're pretty liberal and pretty, you know, relaxed. You know, you know, when I debated a lot of times, if I felt a little emphatic i might slip a d word d darn somewhere or or they are messed up when they said that you know i might have you know but it shouldn't get to the extreme i you know they should be talking as if they have picked up some vocabulary and some new vernacular through debate you know i'm hoping that they should you know come on finesse it at least <laughs> don't just be crude anyways um so yes, um, make sure that they they use their prep time accordingly. If you feel like they a student feels like they don't know what to do, just be like, hey, you have some prep time. Do you want to use some of your prep time? Again, be encouraging. Um, you're the person who's going to decide who wins. Again, don't tell the students. Do not disclose your decision. Put disclose your decision. Disclose your decision. Oh, I got to do some speaking drills. Um, talking about my students, and I'm the one that red the yellow the that. Okay. Um, <laughs> make sure you provide your decision actually on the electronic ballot, and that's where you disclose your decision. Um, and you are there to moderate, so just make sure that the students shake their hands if they're being good sports. You know, I always tell the kids shake hands. Um, make sure that they stand up. I I really I just do not like since the debater sitting down. Like they're not at that level to sit down yet. They're just not. Like, I know they may see me doing things. Don't do not do what I do. Again, encourage them to do the things that I've been trying to tell them to do to make them be better debaters. Um, but yeah, um, so, you know, greet the students. You know, as you see them today, you know, say you did a good job. Again, don't disclose. You know, you can still talk to them about, I'm not there to coach them that day. So you're really there to provide them the feedback to, that helps me sharpen their point. Um, and so, yeah. Um, share your reactions to their work. If you know some, I mean, I, look, I get surprised at some of these speeches. I know that some of these kids have been 
getting it prepared and writing some new stuff down. A kid, I was giving a lecture yesterday and kid was writing the speech as I was giving a lecture. And it was like, do you want to hear it? I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. So you might hear some new stuff that I haven't heard yet. So, you know, you're just there. If there is a dispute, you know, there should be no dis dispute. Tell them to put it in their speech. You know, um, they shouldn't be talking about each other's mamas. This is not Wild and Out. You know what I'm saying? This is not Comedy Roast Jam, okay? Um, so make sure that it's about the arguments and about what is um, argued through not just their analytical analytical arguments, but also what's being argued through the actual academic work of the st stuff that they're citing. Um, yeah, a new debater might slip in a new argument. Just exit out or don't listen to it. If 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 you doing some stuff you know you shouldn't be doing because I'm their coach, I just look at them like Bambi and don't write it down. Like, you know you're not supposed to be doing these things. And so, you know, and you can also do that too, just to give them, like I do what's called, like, I don't know, I've been doing debate so long, I have certain body things I do to gesture to students, like, all right, move on to the next argument. You spend too much time, I might start tapping or like looking at them like, get okay i get this argument you have other things you need to tend to because you know um during this uh during the time of these debate rounds you should be taking notes we'll have paper actually speaking of it's just like <laughs> i'm just pulling out all kinds of debate work from my house this is so weird my debate entraps my life all right so we have these sheets in which there's columns for where you can write notes for each individual person so the way that I evaluate debate rounds and the reason why I feel like I've been known to be a good judge and not to be a biased judge, I don't, look, if it ain't on here, I'm not evaluating it. So if, I, and I take good notes. So if it's not on this sheet, I'm not to evaluate it. So I, I, I base my decision on these four corners of the sheets that I have. And I look at them and I say, okay, that's a decent argument that responds to this. I line it up. I draw circles. I figure out what are my most prevalent arguments. I star things. I draw lines to things. And you can draw lines to see if an uh, argument landed all the way to the rebuttal. If it didn't land all the way to the rebuttal, maybe you don't want to evaluate it if it's dropped, right? And that's a common thing in debate is if it's dropped, it's kind of like conceding the other side's point. If the other person keeps saying, hey, you dropped it and you didn't respond to my argument, well, it's kind of like, silence is compliance right and you're conceding to the other team's argument so you know this is a good way to kind of keep record of what's happening in debate is by keeping a good well this is what we call a flow sheet and so you should also encourage students if they're not flowing if you don't see them with one of these sheets it's a problem because especially if i get into the room it's going to be a problem because they sh they should know that this is a norm that they should be doing every single debate round because it's there's from my experience of doing debate for eight years of competitive national debate, there's no way you can win a debate round without flowing. There's just no way. <laughs> you, No one is like, like, I, I mean, unless you have some super talent, genius, and, you know, I'm pretty smart. And even those people, I think I've met a lot of genius people in debate, they flow. Just to make sure, you know, it's like a checklist, right? Did I catch everything? Uh, so before you get in, just check to make sure, uh, just check in, you'll see me at the door. We'll, um, we'll have like a little judging lounge where we'll huddle up, have some coffee, talk and get the day started. We'll kind of, you know, make sure that I answer all your questions again. If you have any questions that from like, you know, this, and you just thought about it tomorrow and you're like, Hey, Oh, I didn't, I thought to ask this yesterday, but it didn't really come to me or whatever. You can ask me more questions tomorrow. Um, make sure that there's no conflicts or um, conflict of interest that your cousin ain't there and you watching one of their rounds and you're like, oh, they're definitely getting like all the points, right? Uh, um, uh, make sure that you're also to make sure that all the debaters make it to the debate round. Again, you should see four kids in each room. Um, and then you're to open up your ballot electronically and press start. That's the first thing you do when you start the debate round. During the round, you keep quiet, keep time. Active listening, take notes. That's it. After the round, you congratulate the students, tell them to shake hands, determine a winner, give a reason for decision. Now, this is this is this is the thing about reasons for decision. All right. So reasons for decision only really got to come down to one or two things. And reasons for decisions, like, do you going to get all these arguments? You no one ever wins a debate on like five arguments. That's I've it's usually comes down to one or two things, right? So 
choose that one argument or those two arguments that just never went away that stand the test of time during those um you know 16 or whatever speeches there are how many speeches there are in public forum um when you go through all of those speeches and you feel like these are the winning arguments or you know one or two arguments then that's what you're going to say you're going to say hey i voted on that you make our economy worse and i think that your plan is going to make the economy worse and so that's why i vote for the negative team or you can be like you know what yeah i know that the plan may not be the best solution but i'm i want to take the risk that the plan is our best option in order to resolve the status quo right or you can be like you know what i don't think that the affirmative is the better option nor did i think the negative has a better option you know so i'm just going to vote on the negative burden because you know the affirmative has to prove why doing some type of plan or implementation of plan changes the status quo they have to have a problem solution that's the that's the name of the game of the affirmative if you don't believe in the affirmative solution in any capacity and maybe you can believe that they 1% solve. If you believe that they 1% solve and you are and you feel like that's enough to grant them their credence of whatever benefits or advantages come from doing, doing their plan, then that's okay. If you see the benefits from doing the plan, the negative also has the opportunity to have a plan if you're viewing policy. Um, but you have to decide and they have to tell you, they should be telling you what the decision is. Judge, you should vote for me because. And you can star the, those those statements on your flow sheet. All right, they told me to vote on this argument. Let me look at all the things that they put into this argument. And if you didn't, if you feel like there's some things missing, there's some things missing, right? If they're like, hey, if I pass your plan, which uses all this federal spending that we don't have right now because we want to fight and give money to Ukraine and stuff and all the other things we're doing with, you know, our international um military and political landscape what makes you think we have more money for nato in terms of cybersecurity, right and that's going to trickle down into not being military ready nuclear war right and if they make all of those steps and if you read all of their answers and all their warrants come to nuclear war then you can say yeah i vote because you you caused nuclear war to happen but if you're like you know what the affirmative says that we avoid nuclear war because maybe the affirmative doesn't spend any money right we are we already allocate within our federal budget money to NATO. So maybe this doesn't increase our funding to NATO because we already have an allocated budget to NATO, right? So maybe there is no increase. Uh, so that that argument would you be a, you know, I don't link to that. Maybe if I was a different plan, maybe there would be some financial responsibility. But so whatever the arguments are, you can evaluate based on time frame, magnitude, and probability, and all of those things that we evaluate. Again, they should be saying what the time frame, magnitude. If you don't know, then you can be like, look, I had to put this, this debate was murky. I had to put this together myself. And maybe if both of y'all sides, and you might have some debates like that where you don't know who to vote for, but you're going to vote for maybe this gets the better outcome. And so after you give your reason for decision, again, you're just going to put down on the ballot, you know, I vote on this one argument because, and that's it. That, And then you were going to assign speaker points. Speaker points go from 25 to 30. 25 is the lowest you can give, meaning a person was cussing somebody out, was being rude, not allowing a person to speak, doing crossfire, not allowing a person to get a, give an answer, or when you are being asked questions you're being difficult not really answering the question you know what i mean you're not really giving the answers that relate to your you know your evidence then you know that could lower your speaker points if your speech is not organized that could lower your speaker points if you're not working on your diction if you're not enunciating if you're speaking too low if you have the paper over your face like this you know and not having eye contact to the judge then that could lower your speaker points if you're twisting around too much while you're reading a speech if you're not standing still um but there's you know all of those things you can help them be better um i i really prefer students to not sit with a de like i let me this is how i prefer students to talk they can use a podium that's fine but sometimes I prefer the students to have no space between the judge like literally no desk or anything and they can sit um they can sit their paper beside them 
and 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 crosshatch their papers or whatever as they're speaking and sit their papers down and speak to the judge kind of like that. I kind of prefer that, but some people are not comfortable at that level to do that. But I think that that usually is the best thing to do. But, you know, you can always encourage that, but some students just don't feel comfortable with that yet. After you give your speaker points from 25, 25 again is the lowest, 27 to like 28.5 is the usual mean of where you want to provide, you know, speaker points. Um, Sometimes you might hear a really good speech and you might want to give that 29. The maximum amount of points you can give is a 30. It's like perfect. Like I really don't have much to say. Maybe just one or two little comments, but your speech was just chef's kiss. That's a 30. Um, and then after you, you know, you give your points, you give your reason for your decision, you give a little feedback. Um, well, you get feedback after you submit your ballot. You submit your ballot, then you give your feedback. Hey, Mathena, uh, just one quick question on that previous slide. Uh -huh. um, do you, so I guess it said we take, we keep time. I'm sure like things will run over. Do we, do we like interject if, no, okay. Yes, you do interject. You say that's gotcha. time. So once that beeper, the beeper should tell them and you they can, you know, if they have a cell phone and we also provide many of our students with timers. So they should, you know, know the speaking order themselves and they should, you know, work with their cell phone or their timers. Um, but you are also there to make sure that they're not cheating and, <laughs> and stealing time and to make sure that they're keeping according to the actual um, speech order, the speech time. And, um, you know, if they're still speaking when that timer is going, you need to say, you know, that's time, you know, let's let's go, go into the next speech or the next crossfire or or whatever. God, thank you. Yeah, no problem. You can give a couple of, uh, before you get to the round, you can make sure the right people are in the right room. If the right people are not in the right room, give us a call. We make sure that the right students are there. So make sure like you check your, your ballot and you say, hey, are you Emory? such and such, such and such. It'll be their last names. Are you Emory, West, and Thomas? You know what I mean? And if West and Thomas are not, because it might be an Emory team, but it just might not be West and Thomas. It might be Emory, um, Hinton, and and Frasier Bay. Um, so um, there might be changes as more students show up. We may still need judges. So just stick around if you can. If you can't, we understand. We're still internally grateful for any time that you provide to us. Um, and yeah, and we'll, you know, try to make sure that we provide you with pairings in advance so you know if we need you or not. And, you know, if you got to go, just, you know, talk to me particularly, and then I can talk to Tab. Again, we'll provide you with um, resources, um, like sheets that will tell you how to guide the round, tell you what the role of the student is and the judge. So I'll have sheets for you. There is no official rules or scoring system. Your paradigm is your paradigm, right? And and the truth be told, these students should learn how to adapt. And your opinion is going to be your opinion. They should really learn how to overcome people's opinions and figure out how to like, this, this is the debate, honestly. I just hate to be like that. And there's been many times people was like, I didn't like that type of philosophy, but now you make me want to look into it more. Or, you know, you you brought in new planks of that philosophy that that I didn't think that would resolve this, right? And 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 that's what these debaters should be doing. They should be creating aha moments in your brain. Like, aha, oh, that's really innovative. I never really thought about that. I, you know, I because I'm not, we don't work at NATO. We're all late in NATO, right? So they should be doing the grunt work of really becoming the 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 instructor in that round and really telling you why they should win that debate. Um, so your paradigm, like I have my own paradigm. Yes, it's a favorable paradigm and probably because I have some experience of knowing what to look for and what to catch. But, you know, I still have my own paradigm and there's many times students don't like it. Again, another thing too, you might hear debate debaters speaking very fast and I'm speaking very fast too. I'm sorry, it's just, what I do, but um, you might hear them speed reading, which is another norm of debate. Um, speed reading, like, all right, I don't want to do it because I haven't done it around, but they'd be like, NATO stations to replace cybersecurity is one of their main concerns, like that. That's how they be, how fast they'll be re reading, right? And so you'll be, which you probably didn't even get 
any of the things that I said. So if it becomes unclear, even someone who is as advanced as myself, I sometimes have to tell people, look, I'm tired. We got here at eight. You know, um, I don't care if it's a regional tournament or national tournament. Sometimes I don't want to hear that at eight o'clock in the morning. And that's my paradigm. You have to slow down because I don't want to have to keep, I don't want to ask for your evidence and reread it. You know what I mean? The, the point is for you to convey a message to me. So they should, they should be trying to, it should be clarity over speed is just basically the way I look at it. And they can still be fast. I mean, it's just, I don't know how fast you all are or how, how, be, how fast you'll be able to pick up to their speed reading, but you know, that's up to you and you can, you know, tell students like, hey, you know, I'm new to this. You know, you may not want to speed read as fast as you do in the mother round. So for me, you might want to slow it down. And, it, and it's okay to say that. Um, so again, there's no, there's no way of evaluating the round. Really, there's only two options. The affirmative must present a plan and they have um, stock issues. So they must discuss why it's significant, discuss who who is being affected by not doing this plan. What are we missing from not doing this chain of action, right? Um, who does it hurt? Um, why is it controversial? Why is it significant? Um, what are the conditions that make the status quo so, right? Um, and then you talk about your plan and how your plan affirms the resolution. Does this plan stay under the scope of the topic, right? And then the affirmative team has to talk about what are the positive benefits from doing the plan? How do they solve those inherent conditions? So problem, solution. So that's the affirmative. And, and the benefits of doing the plan as well. What are the, the net benefit reasons of doing the plan? The negative side is just like, look, you make the problems worse or we should just go with the status quo. We might as well just go with the status quo because the status quo, maybe there's already things happening in the status quo there's plans and strategies that the government already has working that's already happening. But if you are sapping the resources of the government, maybe there's some trade-off. Maybe we can never solve anything because we're never able to get any of our programs initially off the ground, some of our emerging programs, right? So maybe that's, you know, so the negative team has options in terms, and the negative team can also do a, a counter plan. Most counter plans must be not, well, they don't have to be non-topical. They don't have to be non-topical, but they must be mutually exclusive, right? And so, yeah, the teams should tell you if they have a plan that will compete with the affirmative, but it won't be, it, sh it usually is non-topical. And if it is topical, it would still be mutually exclusive to whatever the affirmative does. Maybe there's a different agent, right? Maybe they say, Maybe they're topical. Well, no, they wouldn't be topical because they use the state. Because maybe you use, like state. I don't know. But um, I don't know. I, don't know. I can't think. I can't think of two, an example right now. But um, there is an example. There, there are kind of plans like, um, you know, we should increase cybersecurity operations with the UN. <laughs> they'll, they'll have that debate. They'll be having that debate in that debate round. Literally, that debate I just had. Um, and what? And they should be arguing why and how they conduct debate because there will be theory arguments and that conversation I had about like can we do both and all of that they'll be making arguments about that and maybe why we can't do both plans and all that so you'll they should be telling again they should be telling you why they should win um and how do you choose um a winner you look at the strengths of the arguments you look at their warrants the supports um what are they backing up their refutations uh, do these arguments still stand ha are they responding have they responded made proper responses um do these ar arguments actually link into the other person does the other person actually cause nuclear war maybe i don't even cause nuclear war you know what i mean so those are the things uh what not to consider your personal beliefs if it ain't on that paper don't evaluate it that's how i stay away from bias and just being like you know there's a lot of times it's like dang i wanted to vote for you but you just didn't say what i wanted needed you to say so sometimes you you, you just have to keep it to what was actually presented um you know, things about like how a person speak, you know, um, accent and stuff, you know, I'm from Kansas City. So, you know, you try to, be, you, you want to stay away from that. As long as they're clear and you, they're trying to convey the message, that's what's most important. Um, arguments that are made during cross-sex, I, I, didn't, I didn't make that point. 
arguments that are made during cross sec should be cross applied into the constructive arguments. If it's just in cross X, that does not count. It must be in the constructives. So they just can't be like, oh, don't you cause economic collapse? And that's it. They just ask the question. That is not an argument. I need you to flesh that argument out. What do you mean by they cause economic collapse? How, you know, what are the things? What what is the impact from economic collapse? What does economic collapse look like? All of those things. Minor points, minor points that are being made in around the minor points add up to the major points. So again, you're only going to be making one statement. I vote on this one argument. You might vote on two arguments. You might be like, hey, I think you cause economic collapse, and I also think that this plan resolves it better. That's two things. You're never really going to have three, four, five. It's typically just one or two. If a team, if 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 a team is giving you too many options, maybe they need to narrow it down to one or two strategies, and and because they're going to start with the, all these strategies, and the debate is going to trickle down like the debates kind of go like this, like a tri, like a triangle, I like this. The debates kind of go like, well, actually, right, am I doing it right? No, it goes like yes, it goes like this. So it's kind of. A lot of stuff at the top, and it goes to a point at the bottom. So that last point should be the only thing that you really focus on. And if they didn't make the right last point, then maybe you need to be like, hey, you had that point, but again, it didn't make it its way all the way to the end. Again, speaker points, again, some... Well, maybe because of bottle. The, I said 25. Well, maybe it's 26. All right, 26 is where you should start. 25, well, I'll say this. 25 is, again, like, you were being rude. Like, you cussed out the judge, calling somebody a B-word, cussing somebody's mama out before you got to... That's the reasons why, like, unethical reasons why 25. And 25 is like, come talk to me. Like, come find a staff member, because we need to talk to that student if they got a 25. 26 is like, you know, you just didn't care. You just came. You just chewing on your pencil. You know, you didn't you 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 spoke for 30 seconds, like you didn't have eight minutes. That's that's the 26. 27 is a new debater, you know, they 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 struggling, you know, but they they trying, you know what I'm saying? That's the 27, you know, give them, you know, some things, just give them that constructive feedback. 28 is average, like I said, 29 is you know, someone who you feel like is that has a potential of maybe being a national competitor or maybe being an advanced competitor. You can see that they really work hard at debate quite often and they practice often. 30 is like, oh my gosh, not only do you practice, but like you, you finesse that speech. You just home ran it. All, all of the, all of their, all speeches, cross-examination you handled, you handled your rebuttal very well. You worked with your partner well, like all of those things you did exceptional you were you know a 30 now here's another thing we got to talk about so a person can get the best speaker round speaker points and lose let me explain that so maybe you're an eloquent speaker but all your content your actual argumentation the way you formulate form formulate arguments or the way that you put arguments together maybe your warrants aren't there maybe your reasoning or your or i read your evidence and your evidence is just poor you know, instead of maybe you should have been looking at CNN instead of Fox. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not saying that Fox is um, not um, credible, but maybe there maybe there are, you know, maybe it's not credible. You know, there, there's certain people who are more credible than others. If you're like, hey, NATO solves and you got this from NATO.com. Well, that's not credible because, of course, NATO is going to say that they solve problems. Because you got it from NATO. You're going to get it from NATO.gov or NATO.org or whatever it is. But NATO does have a website. And you will hear evidence from NATO. Maybe that's not as credible as someone's evidence. And so maybe they, you know, they spoke very well, but their arguments were just not there. So we call that a low point win for the other team, meaning that their speaker points weren't there, but they won the debate round because they had the better arguments. They may not be, may have been the better speaker, but they had the better arguments. Um, common habits of the beers. They stop early. Just keep them, keep telling them to keep going. If they are uncertain about whose turn it is, again, um, there is a sheet and you can mark off 
you know, oh, we got through the 1AC, we got through the cross-examination. So you can mark on the sheet what speech you're at so you can keep track of who speaks next. Yes, Truman. Um, hey, I just wanted to check in about um, the time since it's uh, seven and see um, how long we'll go tonight. Um, I think, I don't know, it shouldn't be that much longer. I'd say about five more minutes. I'll try to keep it sweet. I'm trying to go through it. Um, so yeah, um, they may pause while speaking. It's okay. They may look at the papers. They may ref around. Just again, they might keep going. If they don't keep going, just tell them to keep going. Um, and they should be looking at opponent's evidence. And yeah, the people again might be speaking at a fast pace. They might run out of time. They might be using certain terminology in debate lingo. You might not know about it, but they should be telling you what it means, especially or telling you how those arguments function. This is how it looks in terms of how it looks on the online ballot. You hit that start. It'll tell you who's affirmative and who's negative. You'll see those names and make sure that those names are in that round. You um, provide the points there. You can also um, determine if it's a low point win here. You will press that button, give the person with the higher speaker points, the higher speaker points, but then give the, the team who actually won with the lower speaker points to win and mark it as the low point win. But if it's not, if the higher team with the higher speaker points are the one that win, you don't have to mark the low point win. You write your reason for a decision here. You make sure that your ballot is correct. You confirm it. And then, you know, interact with the students again. We love you being personal and, you know, sharing an environment that makes them feel safe and that they're encouraged to be academics. Um, here's our tournament schedule. You know, if you want to come holler at us again, we would love to have you again. And does anybody have any questions? No, I think those all sounding pretty good. All right, cool. Well, sorry if that was a little lengthy. Um, I was actually ahead of some of those slides. So I'm um, sorry about that. I, I didn't. I should have probably uh, reviewed the slide, but yeah. Um, so that's what we'll do for tomorrow. And I thank you all for stopping by and I'll have those sheets for you. So if you have any questions for tomorrow, don't, don't fret again, you'll have this information on hand tomorrow.